Pastor Paul Adefarasi was trending on social media for urging members of his congregation in a now viral video to have a planned escape route from Nigeria amid the rising insecurity. Well, let's take a look at that video before we come back for a discussion. I bring you greetings from Pastor Ifai, who's busy taking care of a frontier of our world and preparing our escape route. <laughs> If you don't have a plan B, I know you have faith, but I have faith too, but I have a plan B. And with technology, I can speak to you from anywhere in the world. <laughs> Get yourself a plan B, whether that's an Okada to Cameroon, or a flying boat or speedboat as we call them, to Seme border or, you know, a hole in the ground, a bunker. Uh, get a plan B, because these people are crazy. They're nutters, the whole bunch of them. And watch the signs, because it, it can happen like this. Sindhu, I have to tell you, I appreciate his honesty, really. I thought that it was nice that he was able to you know, come forward to say, well, my wife is also there, setting the pace for us. But then the question is, where does your faith lie? A lot of Nigerians on social media have attacked him, saying, you know, you should be preaching, uh, you know, unity. You should stay in your country. You should stay and face insecurity and change the nation. I don't know what your thoughts are. I'm sure you do, Odu. You know me well. <laughs> By now, you know me well. Social media is so valuable in yes. many ways, but I don't like it when it's this echo chamber of negativity. Faith without works is dead. There's nothing wrong with having faith and making a plan. There's yeah. absolutely nothing wrong with it. And you also know on a personal level, I have a problem with people giving advice that they don't take. Yes. So I like the fact that he's actually giving advice while he's walking the walk, he's not just talking the talk. You know, very often we give people advice and we're doing the opposite. He could be a hypocrite. While he's planning his own plan B, yes. he could tell his flock, oh, no, you stay, let's pray. Meanwhile, he's making other plans. I like the transparency here. And this is how a shepherd is supposed to shepherd his flock. You guide them. You protect them. And lastly, I want to say, you know, I like Anton Chekhov. Dr. Abati. Yeah. Chekhov's Chekhov. son. The like, cherry uh, chan. Yes. You know I love his a <laughs> Russian Tom playwright. Yes, Russian playwright, nineteenth century. <laughs> Chekhov's gun is a dramatic principle. If you have, if you mention in the first chapter that there's a loaded gun, in chapter two or three, that gun must go off. So we have mentioned in Nigeria in chapter one that we have six million arms smuggled into the country. At some point, those arms will probably go off. And he doesn't want to be here, doesn't want his flock to suffer. I see nothing wrong with what he said. Yes, but then yeah. 170 million Nigerians, is well, it advisable to send them out? Mentioning <laughs> Anton Chekhov, oh, more. You know, one of those leading lights in uh, Russian uh, dramaturgy. Okay. But very quickly, I think, yes, uh, Pastor Ade Farasin uh, deserves uh, praise for his brutal honesty, for his pragmatism, for speaking the truth to power from the pulpit without any uh, tint of hypocrisy. And he's very lucky to have uh, someone like Pastor Ifani, uh, his wife, whom he says is the one managing the frontiers of their world. world. He was there in church on Sunday uh, preaching. Christian eschatology is about giving people hope. But in this particular case, he, he put the Bible aside. And he says, what is it that uh, Yoruba <laughs> say? That if you are weeping, you must also be seen. If you are crying, you, you must also see. They call it Sukumo Renomus. I'm like that. <laughs> <laughs> And he was saying, look, leave faith aside. Yeah. Leave the Bible aside. Nigeria is in a bad shape. That's his message. You know, and that's why I said he was being sincere. He was speaking true to power. And he was telling his congregation... Uh, he and his family, uh, they are already making uh, plans to leave the country. If anything goes wrong, he calls it Plan B, right? Yes. And he says, so in the age of technology, I can preach to you from anywhere. Well, you know, the major uh, area of concern for me is not just about the truth that he's speaking to power, because as we have seen, nobody is safe anymore. Not even governors, not even Aso Villa is yes. safe. Because yeah, we were told great. yesterday that uh, <laughs> whether they are called burglars or they are called bandits or they are called armed robbers, the whole idea of a criminal operating inside the, the Aso Villa or within the perimeter of the presidential villa, that in itself is enough, uh, you know, is enough uh, issue for people to start packing their bags 
And Pastor Adivara says, even if it is Okada, you will take to get yourself out of yeah, the summarize it. If it is speedboat, yes. whatever you can take, if, I, if you have to begin a rapid dialogue with your legs, <laughs> <clears throat> you know, try it. There sure. are about people like us who are not as privileged as uh, Pastor Paul, you know. Uh, his advice, yes, fine. He, he has described the situation. There are many Nigerians can afford the technology that he talks about and do remote citizenship, the type that uh, Pastor Ifani is uh, preparing. How many Nigerians can even afford to ride Okada across the border? You know, so this is a challenge. At the end of the day, I think the, the rub of it, the long and short of it, is that he has said to highlight how dire, how serious, how desperate mm. uh, the situation in Nigeria is. Uh, he didn't get in, involved in politics. He was just telling the congregation from his own, his own experience. Yes. And uh, who knows? Maybe Pastor Adifar has a dual citizenship. He and his wife and children. It's called so plan B. It's easy for them. <laughs> but some of us, you know, we end up without any plan B. Some of us are stuck here. We have no other country, we have no dual citizenship, and that is why we need to continue to remind the government that, look, majority of Nigerians have nowhere to go, and it is the duty of government to protect them, to secure them, because government has the responsibility to protect. Very well said. Dr. Abati Rufai, your analysis on the story. Thank you so much, Oji. Thank you for the privilege. In 1985, Venom Mario Gary sang a song called Nigeria Go Survive. And there was a famous line in that song that says, Andrew, no leave town, no, Nigeria go survive. If you were to advise Andrew now, what would you tell Andrew? You tell him to run any way possible. Why? Because things are not working. And we need to look at this critically and ask questions and speak truth to power how things can work. As in 1985, when Reno Mario Gary sang that song, the dollar was not 470 that it is today. In fact, it was less than 12.15 Naira, 85. In fact, it was the dollar and the Naira was still at parity because I remember it was in January 86 that the Naira was the value against the dollar and it lost its value against the dollar. So as at 85 when Venom Mario Gary sang that song, there was still a lot of parity between the dollar and the Naira. But if you are to advise Andrew, would it have been a right decision for Andrew to have stayed on in 85 in Nigeria when you look at what has happened today? That's to show you that things are not working and we need to fix it. The leadership needs to come in clean on this and try as much as possible to fix it. No way is safe. Right. You can see a house close to the villa was robbed. Correct. Like That's Dr. Bati was saying today. Yeah. Maybe we might wake up today, tomorrow, and they say the president's toothbrush is missing. They've robbed it, they've taken it away. Let's just be serious with ourselves. What Pastor Paul is saying is what is happening on ground. See, to go and write IELTS for Canada now, you won't get space because the place is filled up. A mm. lot of Nigerians' brains and technocrats are living. People that are working in Mobile, Chevron, people that are earning three million naira per month are living and going to Canada. That's to show you the madness going on. Nigeria will survive, oh, but maybe hey, well. Andrew needs to check out first. <laughs> Good point.